I'm Mike, this is Flashing Badger Painting, and you've been watching my video series where I build and paint an entire Blood Angels army from scratch. We tested a variety of different paint schemes, picked our favourite, and then applied this to our very first squad being the Inceptors with their custom smoke trails. Today the journey continues as I look to introduce the first character. I want to continue the grimdark theme, but how would this fare on bright white armour? Kick back and find out with me today as I try my hand at the Primaris Biologus Apothecary for my Blood Angels in Warhammer 40k. Today's video is sponsored by Into the AM and their graphic t-shirts. I'll tell you more a bit later about how these comfy shirts are helping to support this channel. When the box set was announced, I saw mixed responses to this model and I like the model, but I do get it. It's not dynamic and imposing, but does it need to be? There's the Phobos Lieutenant who's dripping with knives and adorned in Xenos trophies. And there's the hulking captain in Terminator armor. So I don't need the apothecary to be competing against them. I've primed the model in Xandry dust to act as a dirty white shadow beneath. And I've decided to keep the left arm detached and simply push fit the model loosely into the base to make the painting easier. The Apothecary has its own role to protect what's inside the tactical lunchbox, and I like the calm don't argue that he's giving with the pistol. What do you think? If you're not sold on the pose just yet, I hope that by the end of the video I will have sufficiently hyped you up enough to paint your own. I'm continuing with the sponging method to paint the power armour of the Apothecary to give a patchy and weathered look. I normally look for ways to customise my models to make them unique to my army, but I didn't even consider it this time around. Give it a few years and the look may have grown a little stale, but here today it conveys exactly what I want from an apothecary. Switching to stippling with a brush for any hard to reach places. Pro tip number 46. Warhammer is a fun hobby, but it can be an expensive hobby. If you're within Australia and you're keen to save money when purchasing your minis, then you should definitely check out Emperor. I've been buying my models here for years after a friend discovered and recommended them, up to 30% off regular retail prices. And for example, this model came in the Leviathan box set, which in Australia was getting sold for about $420, but I was able to pick it up from Emperor for $336. So keep that in your back pocket for next time that you're buying minis and see how much you can save. There will be people here that don't know what an apothecary is or even what game system this falls into. So we will start at the beginning. In the grim dark setting that is Warhammer 40k, the Imperium of Man has the mighty Space Marines, which are the Emperor's will made manifest. Their duty is to cleanse the battlefield of the foes of mankind and there's no shortage of battlefields in the year 40,000. The Blood Angels are a specific chapter of the Space Marines which I'm starting to collect and I'm documenting my journey. I will have a few red accent panels to denote that this apothecary is from the Blood Angels chapter. The apothecary is a medic but their role is not limited to combat first aid. They are further tasked with performing surgery to implant the additional organs into neophytes to transform them into space marines. If that wasn't enough, they are additionally responsible for the safekeeping of the chapter's gene seed. Gene seed is pretty much the genetic material that allows the creation of space marines and can be recovered from those of the chapter that have fallen in conflict. Trying to work with decals after having a coffee is not my friend. The mind is willing, but the body is all wiggity wiggity. Panel lines with a brown mix will add some depth and interest to the armour. The Blood Angels chapter have their own type of apothecary available to them called a Sanguinary Priest. A Sanguinary Priest performs these same duties as an apothecary, but they are also required to tend to the Astartes afflicted with a death-seeking madness called the Black Rage or an uncontrollable craving for blood called the Red Thirst. Genuinely terrifying, and I might look further into this when I paint some of the specialist units for the Blood Angels, 
But today, I want to focus on this model's role as an Astartes apothecary. Glazing sounds intimidating, but even fooling around as a beginner, you will find it easy to achieve great results. I'm thinning the contrast right down and then pushing it into areas I want to blend from bright into shadow. This apothecary has been crashing through debris and sliding across the battlefield, so his armour would have chips and scratches. The backpack on our apothecary has a few more gadgets and gizmos, and this is called the Nathikium. Its purpose is to administer anti-venoms, healing agents, and stim packs, so the Space Marines can be treated during combat. Some of these extra saws and tools afford the apothecary the ability to crack open power armor or Brazilian nuts. If base coating the metals is taking too long, see if you can flick the model really quick and hopefully the editing team will do you a solid favor. Perfect. My apothecary will need a name and this is where I will call upon your guidance. Help me name this model as I'd love to have one of those little base plates printed and attached to identify him. I want a name with meaning though. It will need to sound like a Space Marine name, but this will be more interesting if it is a subtle nod to someone or somewhere. Let me know if you come up with something and what the meaning behind the name is, and in a future video, I'll include some updated photos with the nameplate. I read somewhere that combat medics would often use red cloth so their blood stains weren't as evident and wouldn't impact the morale of those around them. At least, I think I read that. A viewer raised a great point about how the Blood Angels are so focused on their arts and the idea of their weapons and equipment being dirty and rusting just doesn't sit right. And I absolutely agree with this sentiment, which got me thinking even more about the lore for my Blood Angels. One thing that interests me about the Space Marines as a faction is their seemingly unwavering discipline to their values. Space Marines seem willing to sacrifice their lives to these beliefs, so it's therefore foreseeable that a Marine will be prepared to lay down their life in order to achieve eternal glory before they would lower their standard to having a rusted bolter turn inoperable midway through exchanging projectiles with the enemy. Which got me thinking, if I wanted weathered marines with damaged armour and rusted weapons, and I wanted an apothecary to be wielding medical instruments likely to cause infection, what circumstances would need to exist for this story to be viable? What I've come up with is that these marines have competing values and death isn't an option. I've spoken previously about how these marines are cut off from support and resupply in an arduous and unforgiving campaign of combat. But, death now isn't an option because their mission is to stand in defense of a vulnerable world that's of high importance to the Imperium of Man and the Emperor's War Machine. This will create an environment that will compel each of my Marines beyond the comfort of death and glory and will force each of them to sacrifice some of these values and traditions in order to achieve their mission. Smack in the middle of this test of tenets will be my apothecary. This apothecary will be a man compelled to treat the grievously wounded brothers of his chapter without the supplies he had grown accustomed to in previous conflicts. This apothecary will be stripped of every capability other than affording preservation of life. This model is carrying a vivispectrum in his left gauntlet. This device is a biomatter containment with the intention of recovering alien, or xenos, samples, so they may be studied for anatomic and genetic weaknesses to assist in identifying methods for defeating them. I toyed with the idea of having this empty, even broken and rusted, but the more I thought about it, I love the idea that it houses something very important. This apothecary has managed to recover a sample that he believes is yet to be examined anywhere by the Imperium of Man, and he hopes that it might hold the key to halting the barrage of the Endless Swarm. This lends more weight to why he has this pose of keeping it close beside him and fending off those in close proximity with his pistol. This may also go some way to explaining why his Narthikium isn't getting the required attention, cleanliness and repair. 
our apothecary is looking grimy and weathered. But you don't have to be. I've picked out a couple of t-shirts from Into the AM and I've been wearing this one during the creation of this video. It's really comfy and as you've seen before on my channel, graphic tees are my go-to. I absolutely love this one. If you're looking for a way to support Flushing Badger painting and you're in the market for some new attire, well you can pick up three of these graphic tees for $61.95 and then treat yourself to a further 10% off using the code BADGER10. By using this code when you make your purchase, Into the AM send a slice of the profits across to our channel which financially supports us. So I encourage you to click the link and check out their graphic tees because I'm confident you'll be able to pick out some that you really like. But now back to our apothecary, Badger 10. I often sub out any dedicated base piece for my own design, but I like this one. To create more atmosphere and hide the smooth areas of the base, I'm gluing down some sand to act as rubble. A weathering powder can help visually tie your model to the base. I'm hoping that this will act as a transition to show that the model has been interacting with the environment. Last time around, viewers were divided on applying transparent inks as object source lighting. I can't stress enough, you do you. I happen to like it, so here it is again. The story of the apothecary is complete. My final thoughts? Well, I'm really happy with it. If I had my time again, I think I would start with a slightly brighter base for the armour, but I do think I've managed to convey my message about just how brutal this campaign has been for this character. The next model I'll be working on for my Blood Angels is a Dreadnought, so I'll be taking one of these standard kits, but then applying some unique parts to it to hopefully make it special for my army. So if you've enjoyed the journey so far and you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss the next instalment. Thank you so much as always for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.